Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to go over a question I get asked numerous times every year and that's about tire pressure. Hey, should I keep my tire pressure on my riding mower, on my zero turn, on my commercial mower or my walk behind mower? Should I keep that at the sidewall pressure or should I use a different method for filling up my tires on my equipment? I'm gonna hopefully give you a little bit of insight on the way we do things and why we do things that should help you out on your own riding mower or your customer's pieces of equipment. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as we go along if you enjoy the content. Chances are if you've ever changed a tire in your life, you've heard of Carlisle tires. They are one of the top brands out there and they have been for many, many years. Now this is a Carlisle Turf Saver. Carlisle is actually Carl Star now. Uh, same company, different name. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but they did change their name to Carl Star. Carlisle Turf Saver is the most common tire that they use on riding mowers, both in the front and the back. Pretty much all of your consumer grade mowers are gonna have a Carlisle tire on them. There are a lot of different uh, sizes and stuff. This is a 15 by 6-6. Again, one of the most common sizes out there of tires and one of the most commons for the front. This tire says 14 PSI on the sidewall. Should you keep your tire at 14 PSI on the front tire on this? The rear tires are also gonna be a Carlisle Turf Saver and they're gonna be a 20 by eight uh, with an eight or a 10 rim. They have a 10 PSI max rating on the sidewall. Now, what should you run as far as pressure goes if those are the tires that you have on the most common mowers out there? You know, like this Husqvarna, John Deere's all run that, MTD products like Troy Bilt's, uh, Pool and Pros, all of that stuff runs the same size and styles of tires. Just because it says 14 PSI on the sidewall, should you be running it at that? Now, if you look at MTD or John Deere or Husqvarna or any of these people, most of them are gonna tell you, look at that sidewall pressure and that's what you should run your tire at. If you actually look at the manual, MTD will tell you that it's okay to run it two or three PSI below that rate. Um, if you run your tire pressure below what the sidewall pressure is, it's gonna give you a little bit smoother of a ride. It's gonna take some of the roughness out of the terrain and it's gonna give you a little bit better grip but how low is too low? A lot of times I see people run five to eight pounds in the rears, and then I see people run you know, seven to 10 pounds in the front. The problem with that is when you're a consumer and you're running your pressure and your tires that low, when you go and you accidentally hit a stump or, or something along your route, your tire will actually pop off the rim. There's not enough pressure in that for it to hold shape to the rim, so it just kind of pops off, and next thing you know, you have a tire that's off the bead. I see that, you know, dozens and dozens of times every year with consumers. And then their problem is, hey, they've got to remove the tire, and they've got to try to fix it, or they've got to bring it in somewhere to fix themselves. Removing the tire from the axle is a whole nother problem. We've got videos on both of those things, both on putting them back on the bead and removing them from the axle, but the issue is with the inconvenience. You know, you're gonna be down for that day or however. Most people don't have the tools to do these things to get them back on the bead or to repair the tire, especially if it rips the bead when it comes off. That happens many times also. So again, what should you run your PSI on? I, when we do these kinds of things, we fill the tire up all the way to the sidewall pressure on the majority of what the mowers are. And there's a specific reason for that. You don't want those tires to go flat very quickly if you get something in them, and you don't want them to pop off the bead. They're very low pressure tires, and that happens uh, very often on something like this. If you run, you know, just a couple pounds below, I mean, if this is a 14 PSI max, you could run 12 PSI, and that's probably gonna be just fine. But if you're somebody that keeps an eye on it, that's fine to run. If you're not, these tires will lose pressure on the outside edge against the rim at certain points. That's just gonna happen, especially during temperature changes and stuff. But we fill them all the way up so we don't have that inconvenience to the customer. Most times people will be pretty mad if they get their mower serviced and we put you know 12 pounds of pressure in it and they come spring, it's got nothing in it. You know, You can tell that it's visibly lowered. Most people don't check their tires, so they're gonna be upset about that. That's why we use max pressure on these kind of models anyway. There's a few different instances of where you don't wanna use that, and that comes 
moreover not on your commercial mowers. So you have different kinds of tires. Obviously, those are two-ply tires with a 14 PSI max. Uh, these are just some aftermarket tires, but they're a four-ply. So they've got a 30 PSI max on them. That means that, you know, if you put this on the front tire here, should you run 30 PSI on that? <clears throat> Absolutely not. I don't think so. I would still run 14 to 15 pounds in this tire on the front. But that's because it's a four-ply tire, but you still don't want to take all the bounce out of your tire. Still running 12 or 13 pounds is gonna be perfectly fine. One of the most important parts about all of this is that the left and the right tire should be exactly the same pressure no matter what. You should not have a left and a right on the front and the back that are different or a left and the right on the, on the back that's different. They should be the same on both sides. They should not be different side to side. Now, many of these, as you get into commercial mowers, and like for instance, Dixie Chopper, they say eight to 10 pounds on their rear tires. Well, their rear tires are a four ply, nice big Turfmaster tire. They're, they're rated for good pressure, but they only say run eight to 10 pounds in them. There's a reason for that. Those manufacturers have done the testing and that's where they want you to run them at. Run them at the manufacturer recommended pressure, not the sidewall pressure if it's something like that. You don't wanna go over that at all. Uh, on the fronts on a lot of these Dixie choppers, they recommend 12 to 15 PSI. Those are the same four ply tires, something similar to this size or you know a little bit smaller, a little bit uh, narrower or whatever, but they're still rated up to the same PSI. They're gonna be rated at around 30 pounds of pressure, but they're saying run 12 to 15 pounds in them. Again, there's a very specific reason for that. That's gonna give you on that machine, from the way they've manufactured it, that's gonna give you your nice smooth cut. If you look at MTD, John Deere, Husqvarna, AYP, they're all gonna say run sidewall pressure. In my opinion, that's bad. You should not run that pressure unless it's a case of a consumer that's never gonna check their tire pressure. Then run max pressure. Most of those people are not going to check that pressure anyway, and you're gonna run into issues if you don't. That's why we run full PSI. There's a few instances where you shouldn't do that regardless, and that's one, if you have very hilly areas uh, or areas where you're you know, gonna be on a slope real bad, you want that extra grip. So you wanna run super low PSI, but you also will be, wanna be somebody that pays attention to what PSI you're running at. If you've got those big hills or those ditches or anything like that where you're afraid of tipping over, running a lower tire pressure is gonna give you that lower center of gravity and it's gonna help with that. It's not gonna put you up as high where you could have those dangerous things happen. Same thing with uh, snow blowers and uh, things that you want more traction with, run a lower PSI. Some of those will have tubes and stuff in them, but at the same time, no matter what, do not go over the rated sidewall pressure. Those tubes will not add stability to that tire. They will not make that tire good to a, to a greater PSI. So don't ever run over the sidewall pressure. You know, it's pretty funny. I had a guy the other day, he commented on one of the videos that he could not believe that I was recommending something so dangerous as to fill the tire up to the sidewall pressure, that that was gonna cause you know injury or death. Guys, these, these companies, they rate these tires to this PSI for a reason. It is not unsafe to go up to it. Uh, it it's rated at a burst or an explosion way, way higher than the tire pressure that's on that sidewall. So do not be afraid to go up to that, but never exceed that pressure. Pretty simple with tires, you know, again, revert back to that manual. Some of these older ones will even tell you to measure the circumference of the tire to see if left and right match. Uh, some of the older X mark walk behinds and stuff, they, they tell you that right in the manual. So they don't want you to match up PSI. They actually want you to match up the circumference of the tire to make sure that you're gonna be cutting evenly uh, in case there's one that's worn more or you turn one way more, more often. So again, back to the manual type thing. The manual, the manufacturer is gonna know and they're gonna be able to tell you with a lot better certainty what kind of tire pressure that you should run versus what's on that sidewall. Consumer stuff, again, I usually air it up to max. Uh, will that cause the tire to wear unevenly? In certain instances, it can. You know, In certain instances, the middle can be curved out to where you're just riding on the middle. You can see here on just this tire, 
that the middle is what's mostly contacted with the ground, but you gotta realize with riding mowers and stuff, you are also turning back and forth. So as it's been here, it's been riding just on the middle surface of the tire, but that doesn't mean that during normal operation that that's the only place that that tire is gonna ride. During turns, you're always gonna get some of that side action out of the tire. And on lawn and garden equipment, I'd say full PSI for consumer stuff. If you are a commercial guy or somebody who has a better piece of equipment than your bottom end, uh, you know, John Deere, Husqvarna, AYP, MTD stuff, check out that owner's manual and see exactly what it says and go based on that recommendation. Hopefully this helps you out a little bit and gives you a little insight onto what you should do with your tire pressure, whether you're somebody who's fixing things for people or whether you're a homeowner out there trying to air up your own tires. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the content.